2012 with a bachelor's degree in psychology. He's currently enrolled in Cal U, obtaining his certification in conflict resolution. Jeff Young is a visionary and plans to share his vision through the arts of motivational speaking and spoken word. He has worked with Emmy award-winning producers to help his spoken word help help his spoken word to life through videography and capture the attention of creative thinkers to address social issues. He is also a member of the Eastside United Community Center Board of Directors. I would like to welcome Mr. Jeffrey Young up here. motivation where we breathe life into the goals and dreams of our youth. This world has lied to the kids long enough as time someone told them the truth about how to achieve success and how it's only measured in the number of people you bless. So when you leave this world, your legacy will be respected because no one's going to remember the money you made only the lives that you affected because it's legacy over liability. And there's only two things that'll get you there, and that's patience and persistence. To make it a life, you have to faith, focus, finish with efficiency because between dreams and goals are discipline and consistency. When you're trying to overcome, you have to have grit, grind, desire, and ambition, and know that no one can beat you. It's domination over competition. But now that you breathe a life into your goals and dreams, you have to focus on good habits and not the grand schemes, but the overall achievement of how to be successful, and not that the road to it is stressful, because if you believe that we can bless you, you won't have to worry when life tests you, because you've already become the best you. <clears throat> you see, for me, my life wasn't going right, so I decided to renovate it. I got into the insurance business and penetrated. Now my confidence is elevated, my dreams are inflated, my haters are deflated, because when it's all said and done, I'll get to say those four famous words. Mama, I made it. <laughs> Good morning. Definitely a privilege to be able to be here and be able to speak. I want to definitely say thank you to Matt for inviting me to come up and be you guys' speaker today. Like you said, my name is Jeff Young, and I am all of the things that he had just described. What I want to talk to you all about today is I want to talk to you all about the dream and the, and the significance of that dream. Now, we all know that Martin Luther King had a dream, but I don't want to so much talk about the message of his dream. I think it was evident. I want to talk about the action in which he took in order to make this dream come true. You see, I believe that we all have a dream deep down inside of us, but I believe that many of us are afraid to live this dream for one reason or another. But what we have to understand is that fear is probably one of the most motivating factors in actually achieving something. If you're thinking about doing something new, if it doesn't scare you, in my opinion, it's probably not worth doing it. You need to go back and you need to dream much bigger. You see, most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss. Most people fail in life because they aim too low and hit. Right? And many of us, we've been aiming so low all of our lives that we've hit. And, we, and the only reason we've done that is because we've been afraid to take that first step. But like Martin Luther King said, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step in faith. And then after, and then after you do that, what happens after you take the first step? Most of us, we quit before we even achieve what it is that we're trying to achieve. We give up before we are able to reap the benefits of what we actually sowed. Many of us have quit on Candy Crush. Right? We quit on Candy Crush. It's the little things, people. So yes, today your dreams are going to be Candy Crush. And I'm going to need you all to follow with me on this. See, me, I still play Candy Crush. And I'm on like level 1,700 and something. And every single week they come out with new levels. Just like when you're trying to achieve a dream, there's new levels associated with it. But that's not the only reason I play. I also play because there's these four dreaded people that are ahead of me. And I want to catch them. So bad. I want to catch them so bad because, I mean, if they did it, honestly, how hard could it be, right? If they did it, at least I know that it's possible. So we can't be afraid of the challenges associated with living our dreams. We have to focus on the little details. Recognize you can't paint a big picture without a small paintbrush because you'll miss all of the small details that make it actual artwork. And then what you have to do from there is you got to turn off the noise. You gotta turn off the noise. See, when you first start the game of Candy Crush, there's this intoxicating noise and it's playing a psychological game on you and it's just drawing you in, it's sucking you in, right? And you like it, but what happens when you fail? You get that noise of defeat as well. And it doesn't bother you the first time, it doesn't bother you the second time or the third time or even a couple times after that, but eventually what happens, you quit. 
And you quit not because the level is too hard, but because of you got constant reminder of defeat that you've been having nightmares about the past two days. <laughs> And the crazy part about it is, is many people, be, when they, before they quit, I bet you they didn't even realize that they had the option to turn off the sound. You have to see, when you're trying to accomplish this dream, you have to realize that you also have the option to turn off the sound of people who will place fears on you that you would have otherwise never had. So me, I turned off the sound of Candy Crush, and now I can just focus on winning. And I don't win every single time. Sometimes it takes me 10 times to achieve it, sometimes 15, sometimes even more. You have to recognize that there's a level of failure that, that comes along with every single level, with achieving your dream as a level of failure. But when I do win, what, it, what does it show across the screen? It says level complete. See, that's what I want. I want to be able to see my accomplishments, not hear my failures every single level. So that's what we have to do with the level that we're on right now. You got to turn off the noise so that you can just see your accomplishments, achieve the level that you're on right now, and then move yourself to the next level. And then what do you have to do after that? You have to not quit so early. I think so many people, they quit on Candy Crush so early, and then what did they do? They went to Candy Crush Soda Saga, right? They went to Fruit Farm, and they went to all of the other knockoffs of, knockoffs of the original, but nothing is going to be as sweet as the original. Case in point. I understand they're trying to make a Frozen 2. I'm not sure if you all have ever seen the movie Frozen, but it's one of my favorite kid movies, and I absolutely love it. I think it's going to be very difficult to redo the magic that they created in the first movie Frozen. And that was seen by all of the kids singing the song Let It Go on the news, because honestly, how many times have we ever seen that before? Another case in point, the movie The Lion King. The first Lion King, I absolutely loved it. But then they came out with Lion King 2, Lion King 3, Lion King 2.5, something like that, the Timon and Pumba. They came out with all these different Lion Kings, but they were not as good as the first. And I say that to say this, don't give up on your original dream because nothing that comes after it will be a satisfier. See, that was one of the great things that Martin Luther King did. He didn't give up on his original dream. He stayed focused, and he was able to turn off the noise of everything that was surrounding him so that he can just see his vision, not because he was any greater than me or you in any particular way, but because he chose the option of turning off the noise so that he can just see his accomplishments. And then you ask yourself, where do you go from there? To me, I think it's about when you first wake up in the morning. I heard Les Brown say this. He said, when you wake up in the morning, your brain is operating at 10.5 wave cycles per second. The first thing, you, whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes of your day will affect the spirit of your day. So you have to affect the spirit of your day. Control the spirit of your day. I think not enough people are excited about the sheer blessing of waking up every single morning. Me, every time I wake up in the morning, I say, thank you, God, for giving me another chance to be better today than I was yesterday. And then from there, you got to put on a nice piece of music. Put on some music that kind of gets you going. And if you don't have any recommended music, I would recommend Bruno Mars. I love his last album. There's a song in there that's called Perm. And in the, in the song, he says, throw some perm on your attitude because you got to relax. <laughs> and I absolutely love that. That's good, right? I absolutely love it because sometimes we just got to relax. We got to relax and see, when I was younger, things are much different than they are today. When I was younger, my mom... Uh, every other Saturday will be cleaning Saturdays, and my mom, she would control the spirit of that day, right? She would control the spirit of that day, and we never had to be reminded of when it was cleaning day because we would know it was cleaning day when we would hear Mary J. Blige blasting on the radio, I'm just fine, and we'd wake up and say, oh my goodness, 13 days have gone by already. <laughs> 13, the long, the fastest, quickest day, the fastest 13 days of my entire life, but she controlled the spirit of that day, and if you knew my mom, you knew that this was an all-day topic, this was going to be an all-day task, and it wasn't just... Right, just, just cleaning the stuff that's visible because you did that all throughout the week. But on cleaning Saturdays, not only did you have to clean, but if you're cleaning the kitchen, you didn't just have to wash the dishes, but you had to open up the refrigerator, take all the food out, clean everything in the refrigerator, halfway defrost the freezer, right? And you had to clean up all of that stuff too. And not only did you have to wipe off the top of the stove, but you got to lift up the stove because food gets in there too, right? So you got to clean that stuff out. Then you got to move the stove to the side in between the stove and the counter because food gets down there and water gets down there and God forbid any roaches are going to be in my mama's house. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't, it, we didn't just clean what was visible, we did every part of it. We, many of us, when we're talking about living our dreams, we try to do what's just visible. You can't do just what's visible. You have to be able to do the things that's not visible as well. Not just who you are in public, but who you are in private. That was one of the greatest things that Martin Luther King did was not only did he do what was visible, he did what was not visible as well. He went all in. So go all in on your dreams. You have to be able to do that every single moment and every single step. See, Martin Luther King, he didn't just want justice for the people that were in Georgia or the people that were in Alabama. He wanted justice for the people that were all across the United States. Amen. And not just for the minorities, but for any person that was facing any form of discrimination. 
See, I've learned that a man's character is not so much judged by what he do when people are watching, but by what he does when people aren't watching. That's the yeah, true measurement yeah. of a man's character. So go all in with your dreams. And then from there, if you're not excited about where your life is right now, you have to realize one thing. You are the director of your movie. You are the director of your movie. And if you don't like the way the script has been written to this point, realize that you can affect how the ending plays out. And not only can you affect how the ending plays out, you also get to affect who gets a role in your movie. And I think that's one of the greatest things that Martin Luther King did was he affected who got a role in his movie. See, you can't always dictate who are going to be the extras in the background, right? But Martin Luther King, what did he do? He left them people in their role, in the extras. It's only when you create a dialogue with them people that you give them a role in your movie in which you would have to pay them more. See, if they're just extras, you only got to pay them about 20 bucks. But once you give them that line, now you got to pay them a little bit more. See, there are some of us in here who have people in our lives who don't deserve the role that they have in your movie. So ask yourself, how do you know if these people don't deserve the role in your movie? If they're not contributing in a positive way to the ending of your movie, that means that character needs to mysteriously disappear. And for me, I'm speaking from experience, there were many people in my movie who I had to get out of my movie, but I didn't want them just to mysteriously disappear. I wanted to kick them out in fashion. I wanted to let them know that, hey, your role is no longer needed in this movie. You ever see the movie 300 where the guy is standing before the pit and he kicks him in? He says, this is spa time. He kicks him in. I had to let them know that, hey, look, your role is no longer needed in this movie. And you have to recognize that. There's a level of sacrifice that's going to go along with achieving your dreams. Realize that you may have to sacrifice almost everything to get what you want in life. And without sacrifice, there is no victory. Greatest thing, another great thing that Martin Luther King did, he made the ultimate sacrifice for us so that we can be here and enjoy the things that we enjoy today with all people, not just black people or not just white people, but we can all sit in the same room and we can actually be able to have breakfasts such as this. He made that ultimate sacrifice. And I think it would be criminal of me to not live up to my full potential every single day based off of the sacrifice that he made a long time ago. So ask yourself right now, are you actually paying homage to the people who made that sacrifice all of them years ago, who walked all of their miles, who got arrested, who got beaten, who got sprayed with water hose, who got arrested, who got harassed? Are you really paying homage to those people every single day with the way that you're living your life? See, me, I feel like I'm making that sacrifice, and I do it every single day. When people say black lives matter, I don't want black lives to just matter when they're dead. I want black lives to matter while they're still here. Amen. 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 So I make that sacrifice every single day so that my daughter doesn't have to make that sacrifice. See, Martin Luther King and those people, they made that ultimate sacrifice so that there's a less of a sacrifice that we have to make today. And I'm making this sacrifice so that my daughter doesn't have to start on the basement level or she doesn't have to start on level one. I want her to be able to start in the penthouse suite of the empire that I've built so that she can use the foundation and the blueprint that I created to create her own empire and stand next to mine. All right. See, we have to realize that the lessons we teach our kids now are the foundations of their future. Amen. And how do we do that? We do that just by simply talking about dreams. I don't think we talk about dreams enough as people. I don't think we talk about dreams enough. And we think that dreams are just so far-fetched that you know we never even have to talk about them. And then and what happens when you talk about them, it's a positive thing. See, there's a level of accountability that comes with talking about your dreams. If you never talk about it, there's never that level of accountability. See, I have accountability partners who I talk to every single day, and these people hold me accountable for achieving my dreams. Because of the fear of me, I don't want to look like a liar. But if you say there, that's a motivating fear, but then there's also a discouraging fear that will keep you, that will paralyze you from ever going out to actually achieve your dreams. So don't let this fear be paralyzed. When your kid comes to you and they tell you, I want to be a professional athlete, encourage that. You don't want the first thing that your kid dreams about to be shot down. See, kids, when they're, when they're little, they dream big until someone puts a cap on their dreams. Stop putting the cap on these kids' dreams. If you're, if you're going to come to me and tell me you want to be a professional, you want to be a doctor, now I'm going to hold you to a professional standard. Now I'm going to hold you to that standard of a doctor. Right? And I'm not. And, and if, you're, if you're talking about sports, there's a certain level of professionalism that you have to have, not just in your respective sport, but also in scholastics as well. And they have to recognize that one doesn't work without the other. Because in today's world, there are many kids that are talented on the basketball court. But if you're talented on the basketball court, and I have to wonder every single day if you're going to pass this class, I can find a kid who can be just as talented on the basketball court, but who I don't have to worry about whether or not they can pass this class or not. And that's the thing. 
So I ran across a friend of mine, and here's, here's something. Today is Monday. Here's something that I encourage that you all should do on Thursdays. A friend of mine, he, uh, he, he talks about him and his family. They do what's called Thoughtful Thursdays. And I thought, man, what a great concept, something very easy that we can all do with our families. It's called Thoughtful Thursdays. And what he, he and his wife and his daughter do, they get together every single Thursday, and they turn off the noise, right? Give her all the electronics, and they just sit down and they talk about their visions, they talk about their goals, they talk about the things they want to achieve, and then they hold each other accountable for those things every single day. So then next week when they come back to Thoughtful Thursdays, there's a level of accountability. Okay, what did you accomplish, and now what are you trying to accomplish in the next week? That's something that we can all do with our families, and I said to myself, man, if I would have had that opportunity to sit down and, and talk to my parents the same way that they did, think about how far I would have been in my life up to this point. See, living a life without vision and without goals in any part of your life, whether that be your marital life, your educational life, your career life, your spiritual life, anything. Living that life without vision and goals is like driving in the dark with no headlights. But the thing is, is that we all have the option to turn on our headlights. So choose the option today to give your family and to give the dreams of your kids the, 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 the push that they need. Give them, give them, turn on the lights for them. Turn on the lights for them because they need it. So what I like to do is, me, I like to talk about dreams, and it's, it's, it's so amazing. Um, and I want to talk to you all about a dream. See, it was Dr. King who had a dream that made me come up with this scheme and develop a belief that I can be anything I want to be and overcome any obstacle that's put in front of me. He let me know that I didn't have to see the whole staircase. All I had to do was take the first step in faith and focus on the cause, because when it's bigger than you, finishing is not an option. Your goals and dreams are your baby, so don't you ever put it up for adoption. Somewhere I read, it's better to dream with your eyes open so you can see what you can become. All you have to do is take a leap of faith. You don't have to see the outcome. Trust that you can and will grow your wings on the way down and your dreams will help you fly long before you ever touch the ground. Look in the mirror with conviction and say, I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I have a dream. Deeply rooted in the American dream, and I've got nothing but success flowing through my bloodstream. I take risks that normal men wouldn't even dare. I've been to the mountaintop. Come back down and perform actions that will get me there, because my eyes have seen the glory and the coming of the Lord. Soon as I decided to be a king instead of a pawn on this chessboard, my faith in myself was restored, and to be here to speak today was the reward. You see, my dreams and disbeliefs are in a constant battle, but I use my words as a sword to cut out any negative energy that's placed on me by the enemy because he's not the bank teller of dreams. He's the loan shark of nightmares. Yeah. But like Phil Collins said, I can feel it coming in the air. So I've come today to cast this check and tell the world beware. I'm up next because I decided to live my dream and not my nightmare. Thank you all.